Anything that you want, you have to go and get it from those who had you on slave ships. Right. Let's prove it. Y'all have y'all y'all married? Are you? Yes. Got children. Okay. So you and your husband, your husband and you, created your children, right? What proof of that child did you have to get from the hospital? It's called what? Okay. That comes with the health department, right? Oh. We don't run the health department. It's from those who had us on slave ships. And I want you to see how powerful God's word is. God says, even though you two laid down together, made this child, y'all in the delivery room, child comes out. You know it's your child. Since who pushing up him or her out? You know it's your child. But you got to go to those who had you on slave ships to give you proof that it's your child. Read that part again. Mine eye runneth down with rivers of water for the destruction of the daughter of my people. For the destruction of the daughter of my people. It's not real. This can't be real. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're gonna get right. justice for sure. I know. We are for sure. I'm positive. I trickle is down and ceaseth not. I trickle is down, meaning you can't stop crime. The tears just flow and flow and flow. Until the Lord looked down and behold from heaven. Until the Lord looked down and behold from heaven. That's the part we're waiting on right now. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse three. Uh, let no man deceive you. Don't let anybody deceive you, right? Go ahead. By any means, uh, for that day shall not come, except there shall be a falling away first. So what had to happen? A falling away, meaning the sons and daughters of God, you brothers and sisters, had to fall away from who, knowing who you are. Uh, so they had to take your understanding, take your heritage, take your culture, your language, your land, your God from you. Read. And that man of sin be revealed. Because then somebody's going to be revealed. Who put us on slave ships? Bring it out. Oh, who, who, uh, who, who rape, rob, and murder us on them cotton fields? Everything you can think of, there is a people that's at the helm of that. We can all agree. Who gunned down Sister Sonia Massey? The same devil that had us on slave ships. So read that. And that man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition. So that man that killed Sonia Massey, the Bible says he's the son of perdition or the son of hell. He's the devil. So what had to happen? We had to lose who we were, which happened where? In slavery, right? And now, as you can all see with Trayvon Martin, with Eric Gardner, right. with, with uh, Sandra Bland, right. you, Philando Castile. Right. It goes on and on and on. What's being revealed? Who the son of hell really is. Right. So these things had to happen. But right in the midst of that, Matthew 24, verse 4. Matthew 24 and 4. Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. Come on. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Because Jesus Christ is telling us what? that men are going to come and deceive the sons and daughters of God. I'm looking at the precious sons and daughters of God right now. People came and deceived us, tricked us, lied to us, misled us. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. So in that falling away process, when we didn't know who we were, they inserted a false image of someone. They inserted another gospel. They inserted 
another savior, another God. Because now when we think of Jesus, what color is Jesus? Is this right in the yellow? What color is Jesus? Right. Okay, see? White? No. What do you say, brother? White. You say black. Brother said whatever color you want. What you say, brother? You say brown. Okay, so now. No, no, I said whatever color they trained. We, oh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. So we should all have one consensus of what Jesus looks like. Because where are we going to get the answer from? From our soul. Where should we get the answer from of what Jesus looks like? The book? The what? The Bible. Oh. So if it's in the Bible, we should all have the same agreement, correct? You all understand that, right? Okay, so read that again. Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Come on. For many shall come in my name, uh, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So wait a minute. Remember we just read in Thessalonians, it had to be a falling away first. It was a time where we are going to be deceived throughout slavery. Jesus is also warning us, during that time, they're going to bring false Christ to deceive the sons and daughters of God. And the mere fact that everyone had a different, a slightly different variation is showing that that deception did happen. So the brother's asking, why now? Why now? Okay, we're going to get there. But we got we to gotta walk this dog. We got to walk this dog, right? Go to 24 real quick. Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. So the point of them giving us a false image mm. is to deceive the very elect. You know what elect means? When you elect you're someone, what are you doing? You're, you're choosing them. Choosing you're, them. Choosing you're, them. Making a, a, you're making a conscious decision of who the chosen is, right, right, correct? Right. God says He owned, they came to deceive his elect. Right. So now, in order to know there's a counterfeit or a falsehood in the earth, you have to know what the real thing looks like, right? If you don't know you're the real thing, it's easy to treat you. Brother, get a little round of applause. I like that. Let's go to Revelation chapter 1. So now, we're all going to be unified in what? What Jesus looks like, right? Okay. Revelation 1 and 1. The book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Which Revelation means to reveal. So this is the revealing of who, brother? Jesus Christ. God. <laughs> Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things must things which must shortly come to pass. So now go to verse 14. Yes, sir. No, go to verse 10. Verse 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. So today is the Lord's day. The Sabbath day is the Lord's day. Right. So John the Revelator is letting us know he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Go ahead. And heard behind me a great voice uh -huh. as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, uh -huh. the first and the last. The first and the last, that's Jesus Christ, right? Read. And what thou seest. He tells John the Revelator, everything that you see that I'm revealing to you, do what? Write in a book. Listen, closest, closest in the yellow. So he says, write it in a book. What's the book he wrote it in? The Bible. The Bible. Very good. Verse 14. Verse 14, his head and his hairs were white like wool. So first, somebody somebody, come pick up this beast right here. Help me out. Because in every church, right, there's a variation of one of these, correct? Okay, you say this dude. What have you seen? You've seen one of these, right? Very good. I heard so, that this was a, a painting of an a artist who was drawing a, a picture of his friend. No, his name was uh, fucking... Uh, listen, no, listen, no, good, listen good, listen good, listen good, listen good. We're going to cover that. Yeah. So listen good, read that again. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. His head and his hair were white like wool. Have you ever seen any of these variations having white woolly hair? No. See, the young man in the red said no. Oh, Sister in the yellow said no. But where are we reading? We're reading the revealing of Jesus Christ. Hey, right. And it says he has white, woolly hair. Wake him up. Question. 
Question, who has woolly hair on the earth? Which people? We do. Look at my brother right here. That's woolly hair. That's woolly hair. That's woolly hair. Woolly hair. Woolly hair. Woolly hair. When you look up the definition, in the, it's the 1867 Webster Dictionary. The word woolly, the definition is hair of a Negro. They know what woolly means. But what do they do? Over time, they change those definitions to hide you. That's why we get the real old books. When we were still in slavery or just out of slavery. Go ahead, read that again. His head and his hair were white like wool. So can we all agree that Jesus had white woolly hair? Yeah. Let's read it again. His head and his hair. So the head means the hair on your head. And his hair, he had hair somewhere else. Because Jesus had a beard. Were what? Were white like wool. So why didn't it say white like snow? Because in this part, it's not talking necessarily about so much the color. But the last part goes like what? Like wool. But it's the texture that it's highlighting. The next part tells you about the full color. As white as snow. Now he's dealing with the color. Go ahead. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Because Christ's first miracle, he drank what? He made what? He turned water to wine. Wine. When we, when we have a little drink, bro, what happened to the whites of our eyes? They turned red. They turned what? Red. Wait a minute. Read that again. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet. His what? His feet. So I can look and I can see right. my sister's feet right here, right? right. Like a divine bread. Brass is a derivative of brown. Brown, like a penny. Right? Very good, sis. Let's see. Read this. As if they burn in a furnace. Anything you burn, does it get lighter or darker? Darker. Really? So there's some serious strikes going on here. He doesn't have white woolly hair. Right. He, we're going to get that next, uh, Revelation 1 and 3. <laughs> yes, sir. He, had, he doesn't have woolly hair. It's not white. You've never seen a picture of him like that. Right? Brown. right, sis? Right? You've never seen his eyes with the redness because it's prophesied in Genesis 49 that he would be red with wine. He was going to drink wine. Right. He didn't get drunk, but he was going to drink wine, right? What and then, 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 John the Revelator looks down at Jesus' feet. Now, your feet are normally the same color as the rest of your body, correct? Correct. So now, I got your question right now. Hold on one second. So what would Jesus be compared to today? Would he be a Caucasian man? No. No. By his own description. What do you say, sis? Sister Yellow says no. Bring it up. Would he be a, would he be a white man? No. 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 no, not according to what we just read. The Bible describes Jesus Christ as a black man. That's how the Bible describes him. So, so now we would all be able to explain that the exact same way. Why? Because we got it from the same source, the Holy Bible. Revelation 1 and 3. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth. Sister said reading is fundamental. The Bible says blessed is he or she that reads. Go ahead. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. And they that hear these words. Y'all are here hearing these words, hearing these prophecies. God says, you know, you're blessed more than everyone else that's just walking by and going by. You are blessed because you're hearing things that they have not taken the time out to hear. You're hearing the healing of the nation. You're hearing, you're hearing wisdom. You're hearing understanding. You're hearing truth for the first times in your life. Amen. Read that again. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy. Give me that Revelation 3. Three and a half days. Revelation chapter 3. Real quick. Because his question was, why now? Why now? Wait, first, first give me Ezekiel 37. The book of Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 3. Come on. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? So now. You ask about the time frame, right? So Ezekiel was given a prophecy. Because remember, the Bible says, blessed are all they that hear the words of this prophecy, right? So Ezekiel was given a prophecy about something. He sees a valley of dry bones. And the question is, all these bones, like skeleton bones, can these bones actually live? But let's see what God says. Read. Can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. So Ezekiel said, God, 
you're the only one that knows if these bones will live, right? Jump down to verse 10 now. Verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me, uh -huh. and the breath came into them, uh -huh. and they lived. And they what? And they lived. So remember we read earlier there should be a falling away first? Right. Meaning we fell away from our understanding. Right. We fell away from our language. Right. We fell away from our homeland. Right. Obviously, we all fell away from our Messiah being a black man. Right. We fell away from that. So now, Ezekiel sees us in these last days saying, look at them trapping on a corner. Look at them shooting up each other's cars. Look at them walking around killing each other. Sleeping with each other's wives. Say that again, brother. Ezekiel saw the walking dead. Right. Ezekiel saw, it's like a graveyard. Look at our people. We're in astonishment. How do we live in these conditions? How do we take the stuff that we take? How do we cope with it? How are we able to stand in these hot ass plantations for 20 hours a day? How? They spent so much time and money trying to destroy us. And now we destroy ourselves. Right? Read. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them. And they lived. And they lived. And stood up. Upon their feet, just like we see today. Y'all standing upon y'all feet. And y'all getting a glimpse of what Ezekiel actually saw. Read. An exceeding great army. So after a time, after we're destroyed, after our heritage is taken away, our language, all our understanding of who we are, God says there's going to be a time when, is that when Ezekiel, the prophets, are going to prophesy to the people. And they're going to stand up on their feet, right. knowing who they are now. You're no longer an African-American. Right. You're no longer a Jamaican, a Haitian. Right. You are the children of Israel. Right. God's chosen people. Right. Read that. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. And they lived and stood up upon their feet. An exceeding great army. What did, what did Ezekiel see? An exceeding great army. What do y'all see today? An exceeding great army. Right. Right. Then he said unto me, ah. son of man, ah. these bones are the whole house of Israel. So he wasn't talking about literal bones. He said, what I, what I see and what I'm showing you, Ezekiel, is the children of Israel. Right. Let's go Jeremiah 17 real quick. Jeremiah 17 and 4. Let's see. What did Ezekiel see? And these are the prophecies that we all have to understand. Brother, to destroy you, they spent millions of dollars to do that. Right. To destroy you, sister, they spent billions of dollars to do that. Brother, sister, brother, they spent trillions of dollars to destroy us as a people. Comes Cigarettes, uh, liquor, say that again, weed, sister. Everybody. Everything they put in our neighborhood, is it ever to our benefit? No. Because they put Planned Parenthood in our neighborhoods. It's to kill our demise. It's to kill off our kids, right? Uh, That's what they do. The cigarettes... The, 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 the drugs, the guns. Right up here in Chicago, they have whole trains that stop in the middle of Chicago filled with guns. With doors open, locks yeah, and seals cut. And the craziest part is, it's a liquor store and a funeral home on every block. Every daggone block. And guess what? That's not only in Springfield. It's the same way in Atlanta. Right. Same way in Memphis. Right. Same way in Miami. It's, say that again, brother. It's only our neighborhood. It's only in our neighborhood. Let's see what God says. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage. Wait a minute. The Lord says something heavy. The Lord told Jeremiah, you are going to discontinue from your heritage. What, what does a heritage consist of? Call out some answers. Things that make you you. Okay. okay. Some things that make you you. Like what? Uh, I want to say the things you eat, the things you believe. Okay, so your diet mm -hmm. is a part of your heritage. Yeah. I agree 100%. What else? The things you believe in. Because remember, God says, read it again. I want you to hear what I'm asking. Read. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage uh -huh. that I gave thee. So one, we have to know what heritage God gave us. Right. And that's what we discontinued from. So you had a heavy point. You said our diet. Yeah. So we're going to go to the diet. What diet did God even give us? Bring it up. So that you can see, did we come away from our heritage or not? The reason I say our diet, I read from Dr. Africa that when other religious people 11. come over here, they bring their religion, yes. they bring their food. I agree. They bring everything that makes them them. I agree. We're the only people 
who got our everything from another. One hundred percent, bro. This mother cooking with gasoline. Yeah, bro. Go ahead, read that. Leviticus chapter eleven and verse two. Bring it up. Speak unto the children of Israel. Who is this to? The children of Israel. Who is it talking to, sis? So, I, I like that. Sis said it would come. She's like, us. Like, ask me like silly questions. I got the answer. Go ahead. Saying, these are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are upon the earth. So you made mention of the diet. God said, these are the animals you're allowed to eat among all the beasts on the earth. Verse 7. Verse 7. And the swine, though he divided the hoof. So, sister back there, what's the swine? A pig. Okay. Read. Though he divided the hoof Come on. and be cloven footed, Come on. yet he cheweth not the cud. Come on. He is unclean to you. Okay. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. Okay. So God gave us a heritage. We, you said it was the diet. We just read the dietary law. So the dietary law says we're not supposed to eat any part of the swine. Did we come away from the heritage that God gave us? We did. You understand that? Just based on that alone. But guess what? It gets better. You thought that was it? Come on, bro. Wait, wait. Now here, just give you one. Come on now. Keep reading. Yes, sir. Of their flesh he shall not eat, and their carcass he shall not touch. They are unclean to you. And these shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever have fins and scales in the water. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Ooh, Let's slow down. We got to slow it down a little bit. Because guess what? Some of us may have that back at home in the freezer, right? Yeah, what, what should you do with that swine in the freezer? Get it out. See how simple that was? Get a lot of round of applause for that thing. It's just that simple. To keep God's commandments is not hard. When you go to the supermarket, just don't buy it. That's it. Just don't buy it. And guess, guess what? On today's the Lord's Sabbath day. Don't do any shopping on the Lord's Sabbath day. But we'll get to that too. Keep reading. Yes, sir. And these say you eat of all that are in the waters. Listen good. Listen good. Listen good, y'all. Whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them. You see how God covers everything? He said in the seas, in the waters, in the rivers. So don't be like, oh, I'm going to the little creek out back. God ain't say that. Nah, you ain't slick. You ain't slick. God is crazy. He says in all the waters, anywhere there's a body of water. How y'all doing, family? God says, this is what you can eat from that body of water. Go ahead. Him shall ye eat, and all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. So I got a question. God, we're talking about in the water now, right? In the water. God says the children of Israel can only eat that which has fins and scales. So the scripts. Have fins. <laughs> Why are you saying like that? Does it, does it have fins and scales? No. No, right? No. So are we allowed to eat it? No. No. How about how about lobster? No fins and scales, right? So so we all understand. So guess what? Bass has fins and scales, you can eat that. Salmon has fins and scales, you can eat that. Snapper, grouper, uh uh give me tuna, give me some more. Crappie. Crappie. Yeah. Salmon. Salmon. Uh, Salmon. Trout. So all, those are stuff we eat already, right? Uh, Whiting. We eat those things. God has given us a strict dietary law that is our heritage. The fact that we eat shrimp, lobster, scallops, all of that stuff, they make it seem like it's glorious and it's prestigious to eat these things. God says, this is why we're the number one in gout, hypertension. Every ailment, Everything. we're number one in. Diabetes. Everything, diabetes, you name it. Why? Because we're eating what God told us not to eat. You see how simple that is? So remember, Jeremiah says we were going to be removed from our heritage. Right? Let's go back to that. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee. To serve thine enemy. Wait, 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 wait. The Lord is, see the Lord, I, we didn't get to that part yet, but the Lord is very descriptive 
of how we were going to lose our heritage, Bring it out. our land, right. our culture, our dietary Bring laws, yeah. our way of dressing. You know, yeah. also was going over that earlier about how we dress, right? All of that is a part of our heritage that we lost. But God tells us how we lost it. Read that part again. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in a land which thou knowest not. Question. <laughs> I think brother got it. We were brought here how? How did we get here? Family just came up. How do we get to this part of the earth? Okay. Okay. Right? From the interiors from West and East Africa. Right? But what mode of transportation? Okay. Okay. Everybody say that again, sis. Sis said ships, because they were really large, right? A boat is like, I rode just me and the boat, right? It was ships, right? Now, I got a question for you. Everything we've been reading today, where did we get it from? I mean, I said, I said, we read it. Damn, I gave it away. <laughs> we've we been coming out of what? We've been coming out of what? The Bible, right? Yeah, okay. So I got a question for y'all. Knowing that we all just agreed that we came here on ships, correct? correct? correct. Shouldn't that also be covered in the Bible? Yeah. Because the Bible covers our beginning and our end, does it not? Oh, we yeah. just read Revelation, right? The revealing of the end. Yeah. We quoted Je Genesis 49, which means the beginning. Yeah. So you're telling me one is. of the greatest atrocities to happen to mankind is not in the Bible? No. It is in well, there. Oh, see, sister said it was accomplished. She said, no, I know it's in there. They're going <laughs> to find it right now. You dag on right, sister. We're about to bring it out right now. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Read verse 15. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. On, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So hearken means listen. So God is talking to the children of Israel through Moses in the wilderness. We know that history, right? The Exodus, we came out of Egypt. We know that history. We learned that basic history, right? So God is talking to Moses. Moses is talking to the children of Israel in the wilderness. And he says, if you will not hearken, meaning listen, and what? To observe. To do. To what? To do. Now here comes the action. Right now we're listening, right? Uh, sis cooking right here. Don't get, don't get me started, sis. We're trying to stay on course right here. Try to have you go somewhere else. But that's true. The Lord is saying you have to hear it, but you also have to do something behind what you heard. So sis is right. Back in James, when he says faith without works is dead, that's in Deuteronomy as well. Thanks, just brought it out. Read. To do all his commandments uh -huh. and his statutes, uh -huh. which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Ooh. Sis, right there. Are curses good things or bad things? They're bad, right? So God says, if you don't hearken, listen, and do all of his commandments, that curses were going to come upon the children of Israel. But let's see what some of those curses are. Let's see who it fits, right? Verse 68. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Okay. Let's go to Exodus 20 because we have to explain what that Egypt means, right? We read that and sometimes words are put in, God puts words in there and it seems confusing. The Lord says he's going to bring us into Egypt again, but the mode of transportation is what? Ships. ships. What does Egypt mean in the Bible? Let's see. Read. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, uh -huh. out of the house of bondage. So Egypt means bondage. What's another word for bondage? Bring it out. Huh? Chains. Bondage. It's called slavery. Right? Slavery is bondage. When we were in Egypt as slaves, we were known as bondmen and bondwomen. Why? Because we were in bondage. Make sense? So now let's go back. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So how did God prophesy the children of Israel were going to go into slavery? By way of what? By on ships, come on. By the by the way whereof I spake unto thee, come on. thou shalt see it no more again. Come on. And there, and there, where you got off those ships, ye shall be sold unto your enemy. Now, historically, is that a fact? When we got off those slave ships, were we sold? 
Yeah. We weren't able to go where we wanted to go and do what we wanted to do, right? We were sold, so read that again. And there, there where we got off those slave ships, ye shall be sold unto your enemies uh -huh. for bondmen. There goes that bondage again. And bond women. Uh -huh. And no man shall buy you. And no man would be able to redeem us from that condition. Bring it up. Where's the poster? Come in. So now, this is it historically accurate? All right. Slavery on ships. Actually, yeah. this same gentleman, Will Smith, just did a movie about him. Yeah. Bring it up. What's, what's the name of that movie again? Will Smith? Emancipation. Emancipation. It was about this brother right here. Now, so this is a historical fact. These slave ships are a historical fact. Being sold on slave auction blocks are historical facts, right? But we just read that out of the Bible. We were going to be sold for bondmen and bondwomen. We were going to be uh, go into um, bondage again on ships. Keep that held up like that. Read. Jump to verse 48. Verse 48. Come on. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemy. So when we got off those ships, didn't we have to serve those enemies that had us on the ships? Oh, you know. Man. We did. We did, right? That's yeah, a fact. We, yeah, we have hey, to serve this, them too. This ain't hate speech. This is truth. Yeah, Come on. Which the Lord shall sin against thee. Who sent them against us? The Lord shall sin against thee. I want you to think about this. To show how this is a spiritual fight. You have a ship with 300 of our people, notably the strongest people on the face of the earth. Can anybody deny that? Nobody so you're telling that. me ships with 300 of our people, mainly the men, on one ship with 15 to 20 white men. You're telling me we couldn't subdue every single ship? I'm sure you know. Physically, we damn sure could, right? Yeah. But why, why couldn't we? Let's read it again. Whom the what? Which the Lord shall sin against thee. Who sent them? The Lord. So we're talking about slavery being an act of God. Bring it up. Do we understand that, right? Yeah. We are God's children. God gave us commandments, gave us the instructions, gave us the wisdom on how to keep his commandments. Right. We said, God, we're not doing your commandments. And we did whatever we wanted to do. So as any parent... Would you punish your rebellious child? So this is what the result. Question. Answer question. Yeah. You I would. You would. How about y'all? I'm a parent. My kids act up. Guess what? There's different it's levels of punishment. Yeah, right? it's different levels. It Some, you want time out. Some, you have to go, uh, there's no video games or whatever, whatever. Yeah. And then you get to the point where you got to what? You your got physical. to whoop that yeah, behind. Yeah. We all we all have been there. Yeah. Right? I got my ass The Lord <laughs> <laughs> Me too, brother. On, no <laughs> but the point is, before this happened, God gave us many, many warnings, yeah. as any parent would do. Right. This is the last straw. Right. God says, okay, I've sent you saviors. I've delivered you multiple times. I've shown you my judgment upon others, and you just won't get it. it so now I have to pull the belt out. Just like mom. <laughs> just like, just like that. Just He's like a, daddy, hey, bro. hey, read off, finish that verse. Which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. So when we're hungry, everything we consume, we have to get it from those that had us on slave ships. Right. Right. Think about anything, any produce, any seed. If you want to plant your own garden. Yeah. Come on. I heard where, Monsanto's got that where you all get the seeds from? <laughs> from those who had us on slave ships, yeah. Right. No matter what you want to do. So in hunger, when you want food, even if you go to a mom and pop spot right here, yeah. guess where they get their stuff from? Exactly. You understand? Yeah. Go ahead. And in thirst. We're thirsty. Sis got the water in her hand, got beverages out here. Bring it out. That comes from those who had us on slave ships. Right. Can anybody deny that? No. We pay a water bill. Who are you paying? Those that had us on slave ships. Right. Go ahead. And in nakedness. Our clothing line may be from a friend, family might make it, but where do the textiles come from that make that? Listen, we picked cotton for hundreds of years. What black entrepreneur owns the cotton fields? So it's those who had us on slave ships that owned it. We all understand that, right? But here's the kicker. And in what of all things, God says, anything that you want, you have to go and get it from those who had you on slave ships. Right. Let's prove it. Y'all have y'all y'all married? Right here? Yes? 
Y'all have children? Okay. So you and your husband, your husband and you, created your children, right? What proof of that child did you have to get from the hospital? It's called what? Okay. That comes from the health department, right? Hold on. We don't run the health department. It's from those who had us on slave ships. And I want you to see how powerful God's word is. God says, even though you two lay down together, made this child, y'all in the delivery room, child comes out. You know it's your child since you pushing him or her out. You know it's your child. But you got to go to those who had you on slave ships to give you proof that it's your child. Read that part again. And in what of all things, God says, whatever you want, you're going to have to go to them. So that means education. That means religion. That means food, clothing, water, safety. Our sister, Sonia Massey, sought safety. And guess what? That devil put her to death. Because when we want to be made safe, that's who we call. We call them. That institution is set up by those who had us on slave ships. Y'all understand that? Then we're going to march for justice and ask for justice from those who had us on slave ships. That's why it never, it never works. What we have to do is come back to the laws of God, knowing that we are the children of Israel. We must keep his commandments because God is an angry father. But let's go a little further. Finish that out. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. I want to, we want to try an exercise real quick. I see you got your phone in your hand, bro. You got your phone in your hand? Take it out real quick. Go to Google real quick. Let's go to Google real quick. Everybody, right there, right there too. Take your phone out. Go to Google real quick. And I'm, I'm going to tell you what to type in. Because read that part again. And he, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So it says, and he will put a yoke of iron. Those who had you on slave ships is going to put a yoke of iron around our necks. So type in Y-O-K-E-S. Yokes and then of iron. Three words. Yokes of iron. That's what God just said. God said the one that is on slave ships is going to put yokes of iron around our necks. So I see, I see, bro, I see, bro, in the blue hat smiling. What did you pull up? Images of who? No, but who is it? White people, Chinese people, black people? Oh, really? So wait a minute. Hold on. Where are, so Google is telling you who had yokes of iron around their necks. But God wrote that thousands of years ago. We work with anybody and form coalition with anybody that has revolution on their mind. We might not be back. I might be in jail. I might be anywhere. But when I leave, you can remember I said with the last words on my lips that I am a revolutionary. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. We want freedom by any means necessary. We want justice by any means necessary. This is a revolution of God. This time that we live in it, the greatest time on earth, revolution. A spiritual and biblical revolution. All these lives will be shut down in earth. I live in Britain. He's strong.